tonight we have also a musical celebration. We have the, uh, we have the European premiere uh, of a work uh, composed in honor of Seamus Heaney by the American composer Mohammed Farouz. Uh, the embassy has been in touch with him in New York and he has given his permission for us to have the European premiere this evening. Uh, he has given his blessing to an arrangement of his work by Maltese composer Michel Paris. And we are delighted to have Michel here this evening to perform this for us. The Tolland Man. Someday I will go to Aarhus to see his peat brown head, the mild pods of his eyelids, his pointed skin cap, in the flat country nearby where they dug him out, his last gruel of winter seeds caked in his stomach, naked except for the cap, noose and girdle. I will stand a long time, bridegroom to the goddess. She tightened her torque on him and opened her fen. Those dark juices working him to a saint's kept body, throve of the turf cutter's honeycombed workings. Now his stained face reposes at Aarhus. I could risk blasphemy, consecrate the cauldron bog, our holy ground, and pray him to make germinate the scattered, ambushed flesh of labourers, stockinged corpses laid out in the farmyards, telltale skin and teeth flecking the sleepers of four young brothers trailed for miles along the, lane, the lines. Uh, something of his sad freedom as he rode the tumbrel should come to me driving, saying the names Tolland, Grobel, Nebelgard, watching the pointing hands of country people, not knowing their tongue. Out there in Jutland, in the old man killing parishes, I will feel lost, unhappy, and at home. Mm. The Underground. There we were, in the vaulted tunnel, running. You in your going away coat, speeding ahead, and me, me then like a fleet god, gaining upon you before you turn to a reed. Or some new white flower chapped with crimson, as the coat flapped wild and button after button sprang off and fell in a trail between the underground and the Albert Hall. Honeymooning, mooning around, late for the proms. Our echoes die in that corridor, and now I come as Hansel came on the moonlit stones, retracing the path back, lifting the buttons, to end up in a drafty, lamplit station after the trains have gone, the wet track bared and tensed as I am, all attention for your step following, and damned if I look back. The Forge. All I know is a door into the dark. Outside, old axles and iron hoops rusting. Inside, the hammered anvil's short pitched ring. The unpredictable fantail of sparks. Or a hiss when a new shoe toughens in water. The anvil must be somewhere in the center, horned as a unicorn at one end square, set there immovable, an altar, where he expends himself in shape and music. Sometimes, leather aproned hairs in his nose, he leans out on the jam, recalls a clatter of hooves where traffic is now flashing in rows, then grunts and goes in with a slam and a flick to beat real iron out, to work the bellows. Tate's Avenue, not the brown fawn car rug, that first one spread on sand by the sea, but breathing land breaths, its vestal folds unfolded, its comfort zone edged with the fridge of, fringe of sepia-colored wool tails. Not the one, scraggy with crusts and eggshells and olive stones and cheese and salami rinds, laid out by the torrents of the Guadalquivir, where we got drunk before, before the corridor. Instead, again, it's Locked Park Sunday Belfast, a walled backyard, the dustbins high and silent, 
As a page is turned, a finger twirls warm hair, and nothing gives on the rug or the ground beneath it. I lay at my length and felt the lumpy earth, keen sensed more than ever through discomfort, but never shifted off the plaid square once. When we moved, I had your measure and you had mine. Mm -hmm.